Hi, Raj Shekhar. How are you? Yeah, fine, sir. What about you? I'm good too. Thank you. So, can you tell us something about yourself? Yes, sir. I am Raj Shekhar Kumar. I am uh, looking for job change on ATL tester. And I have worked on uh, some tools like Oracle as a database and uh, ATL tool uh, like uh, Informatica. And uh, bug tracking tool, uh, it is Jira. And for accessing, I use the Toad. And so, also prepare test cases and also know about uh, test scenarios. Mm -hmm. And little bit know about the Linux also. Okay. So, how many years of experience you have? Four years, sir, totally. Four years, okay. Can you tell us more about this Informatica ETL tool? So, Informatica is used for the extract transform load. Mm -hmm and uh, apply the business logics and cleansing the data. Okay. Wh which are the other tools that can be used apart from uh, Informatica? Uh, Jira for the bug tracking tools. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which are the various components that you are using in Informatica tool? Uh, there is a uh, four uh, components like uh, repository mm -hmm. and uh, uh, designing and monitor and uh, manager. Uh, probably I worked in uh, workflow monitor and manager. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what is the difference between connected lookup and unconnected lookup? Uh, unconnected lookup, it is a not connected by pipeline and uh, connected lookup, it is a connected by pipeline one by one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any, any other differences? So there are four to five key differences that you can highlight as the difference between connected lookup and unconnected lookup? Sorry, sir, I'm not getting. That is totally fine. So if uh, this is a mock interview, <clears throat> sorry. So even if you're not aware about the answer, so we will give you the answer. But in a real time interview, this, can, this question can be asked to you. Okay. <clears throat> See, first of all, in connected lookup, uh, data is directly received as input values from the transformation, right? While in unconnected lookup, it does not directly take the values. It receives them from the result or maybe some other function you can say, right? For synchronization in connected lookup, it is connected to the database. While in unconnected lookup, you don't have any synchronization technique, right? In unconnected, it supports uh, static cache. In connected lookup, it supports uh, static as well as dynamic cache, right? Then user defined default values are supported in connected lookup, while the default values you won't get in the unconnected lookup. So that is the main differences. Now, what is the difference between active transformation and passive transformation? Active transformation is whenever the data transfer through it, uh, it is the uh, number of rows changes. Hmm. And passive means whenever the transformation uh, data passes through it, and I'm in number of rows, rows changes. Hmm. And do not changes hmm. in passive transformation. Okay. Now consider a scenario where, um, so so this is again a scenario based question. So this okay. this scenario is about uh, you are using ETL testing tool, but you are not getting proper results out of it. So what can be the possibility behind it? Any any scenario that you have come faced so far? Sorry, sir, I'm not getting question exactly. Mm -hmm. Let's say you were using this tool, right? ETL testing tool. Yes. But yes. Yeah, but sometimes the desired result you are not getting. Because we are uh, transformation, whatever the applied transformation, it may be wrong. Mm -hmm. And that may be wrong uh, due to the data loss uh, while uh, applying the transformation. Mm -hmm. And any chunk of data uh, populated in source. Correct. Right. Can, be, can be a possibility. Okay. Now, what do you mean by uh, workflow monitor? Workflow monitor. Mm -hmm. uh, here we can uh, see the errors also and success or fail in. Uh, you most probably see in a log session. In log session, we can get the what, uh, where is the exact error, uh, a writer or transformation or the reader. 
we can get like that uh, what is the error uh, where there is okay and what is the difference between stop option and abort option stop is uh, uh, stopping the process mm -hmm. abort is uh, totally stop the process mm -hmm. i mean totally discard the discard that process right abort option means it will fully terminate the currently running yes, task stop. Yes. right stop option will execute the session task and it will allow another task to run simultaneously right so yes. in in other words stop option will not kill any processes but it does stop processes from moving further from sharing resources right okay. so that is the basic difference now can you can you tell me few of the etl testing bugs that you have found so far yeah uh, in transformation bug and source bug target bug uh, as well as count mismatch null values populated in target there also some uh, special character junk uh, junk data populated Mm -hmm. while we are transferring the source to the staging area and also extra data loaded in target correct okay what is the importance of partitioning in a session partitioning in the session it is uh, improve the performance of the flow of the data mm -hmm. uh, source to target okay uh what what actually uh, apart from improving the performance so how how actually it will improve the performance it is run parallelly sessions one by one mm -hmm. so with the partitioning option you can say a large data set can be divided into smaller parts that can be processed in a parallel operation as you were mentioning right which improves the overall performance right it also yes. improves the efficiency these kind of optimizing sessions right it would increase the server efficiency and server performance as well okay what is what do you mean by star schema star schema is the uh, centralized located fact table and uh, surrounded by the dimension table mm -hmm. and are you aware about fact table in that yes i know so what is what is fact table what is dimension table dimension table is contained primary key and it is a alpha numerical value and it is contained a detailed descriptive data about the business mm -hmm. and coming to pack coming table uh, pack table is uh, contained numerical data and it is contained a uh, foreign key and uh, it is contain the measures about the business mm -hmm. as the details about the business okay let's say you have some junior member who has joined your organization right and he or she is writing the test cases so how will you review those test cases based on the client requirement uh, first of all i study the stm document based on that i will check also whatever written by the my junior and uh, it is uh, uh, cover uh, covered by the uh, covered all the requirements covered in that uh, it is okay then any extra or any less uh, test cases uh, i will add and extra any extras i will remove that and any any corrections and any scenarios are missed any test cases are missed and any uh, uh, that's it sir yeah that is fine so whichever test cases are not relevant you will remove them whichever are relevant you will keep them in the tool or let's say any repository that you are having but which are the different parameters on the basis of which you will determine that whether those test scenarios those test cases written by your team member are relevant or those are irrelevant based on client requirement uh, suppose uh, client in uh, stm document client says uh, some names like i need uh, such as names like in target mm -hmm. we, we have to write uh, test cases like that uh, conversion uh, some salary some salary or full name full name by the first name and last name we have to write the concat between first name and last name mm -hmm. we have to uh, mention the new column in the target 
it, it, uh, I will check that mentioned or not, uh, that transformation applied or not. I'll check like that in test cases. Okay. All right. Which are the challenges that you have faced so far in while doing ETL testing? Uh, heterogeneous sources uh, like plat files database. Mm. Uh, uh, and uh, most bulk data uh, coming from the client. And it is uh, very challenging for the validator while the flat pile for a crown checking mm. in source. And also the more data already present in the data warehouse. Mm. Also you have to check the incremental load. It is also challenging. Okay. Historical data already present in data warehouse. Mm -hmm. and some technical issue and data loss during the ETL process. Right. Which are the different uh, stages in the ETL testing process on a very high level if you want to summarize? Let's say if you get some story, user story for testing. So what are the different stages that you will follow as a part of ETL testing processes? So which are the different stages? A source layer and staging layer as well data warehouse layer uh, lastly no. data no. Mark layer. yeah yeah so that is that is a part of the execution level right but what all things you will have for example first of all you will analyze the requirements you will understand yeah. the business structure you will understand the client requirement right just now we were discussing then you will have validation and test estimation you will estimate the time and expertise required on carry on to that particular procedure right then what what on, on, on the similar lines, which are the other stages that you will... Uh, I have uh, used Agile methodology in my okay. project. Okay. Agile methodology means first I'm coming to understand the client requirement by referring the STM document. Mm -hmm. After that, I prepare the test cases. Test cases, uh, it is approved by my team. Team mm -hmm. lead also, uh, Scrum Master by team. And I have to, uh, once the bit deployed, uh, whatever uh, relevant uh, environment, uh, testing environment, I have to execute the test cases. And after that, any bug uh, found to me and I have to uh, raise the bug report to the particular developer. And also I follow up uh, until it resolved. Okay. And if it is not closed, also I um, continue the cycle repeat once. Sorry, sorry. Now let's say you had to test user story A. Now that user story A, you have written the test cases, your lead also approved, reviewed the test cases and gave the approval to you. You executed those particular test cases. Now the same user story A is demoed to the client, right? During the demo, you came to know about some particular scenario related to ETL testing, which has not been done. For example, load or any, any other scenario that you came to know that is not working. So demo got failed, right? So how will you handle this kind of situation? Yeah, first of all, I convince uh, my team lead. Mm. Uh, I suggest to convince also client because mm. it is a uh, young, uh, young stage for the, we came to up to a releasing stage. It means the end of the project because mm. no more time, we have no more time to release. In that scenario, we have to convince for the client uh, we request like that give me more time at least for the uh, retest or it is for the fix uh, that whatever bug remain so so they have already they had already allocated you the time right you had the time to write test cases you had time to get it reviewed you had time to get it approval now during the demo why the demo was scheduled because that particular user story is completed that is why the demo has been scheduled so now coming to that aspect in the demo if that particular thing is not working so how will you handle this scenario mm, sorry sir they didn't face it like scenario but let's say if you face in the future then what will you do because in the demo everyone would be there and that particular thing yeah. let's say in the user story a you had tested 10 acceptance criteria over there. You had tested all of them, but some particular scenario has been missed. So how will you handle this situation? It's good. It has not come to you. You know, you haven't faced this kind of situation till now, <laughs> but what it comes to you? 
Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what you can say is you can uh, request them to uh, you can include that particular scenario in your test case repository. You can request them more time. You can buy that particular time in the for the next particular sprint. So in the next particular sprint, you had three user stories. So along with that, you will have to cope up to test this particular story and few other scenarios also. Right. And then once you are done with the detailed level of testing, then you can schedule the demo once again, or you can send them an email with the test results that so and so scenario has been working fine. So they can proceed for the production deployment like that. Okay. How do you keep yourself updated? Let's say if any new tool or technology has been launched in the market. So how will you keep yourself updated? Yeah, I I I follow the learn learn and learn method also by side by side with my work also I will uh, many source are there in uh, social media also YouTube is there also by the person I mm -hmm. have to learn by person also by the some sources mm -hmm. I have to keep updating myself uh, through new skills. Right, right. So, which is the recent tool or technology that you have learned? Uh, Linux, sir. Which one? Linux. Linux, you have learned. Okay, so what did uh, you learn in Linux? In basic commands, sir. <laughs> which, which basic commands? Uh, file management, depository, mm -hmm. you know, directory management. Okay. And okay. server connections. And some basic uh, commands like that. Correct. Please. Right. Okay. Okay, Raj Shekhar, I am done with the interview. Do you have any questions for me? Any suggestion for me, sir? So learn test automation, learn Java or Python programming language. That would be beneficial for you in the career. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Rest okay. all looks good. Right. So thank you so much for coming on our channel and giving this interview. And wish you all the best for your career ahead. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.